locals come up to our car, our vehicle, or stop us and you know and tell us stories about how they, you know, they captured somebody or something, you know. And uh, <laughs> but uh, hey, it's interesting to go out and cruise around. Kind Nothing of on 48 there. hours yet. Huh? What, what's that? Nothing on 48 hours yet, or anything like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, sir. We've been running for a while now. Can you, does the sheriff have a handle on crime stats from the before PWP and, and now? Has it made a difference in impact? Uh, Can you judge it? Because sometimes that's hard to do. Yeah. Whether he does or not, I'm not sure. Um, I'd just be interested to see it. I know what, what stats they've been giving us is, uh, like this is for July, and I've got all these on a little flash drive, but yeah, I didn't, you know, didn't have a projector or computer to put it on. But uh, you can see, they first of all they give us the stats in a spreadsheet, and then they give us these graphs over the last few months showing, you know, which precincts are having the different types of crimes. But they also have these these um, graphs that go back about a year. It doesn't go back prior to prior the to. PWP program. Well, I just wondered if it made an impact. Also, uh, can you tell me which precincts uh, are the high crime? Yeah, I sure can. Uh, right now, the Nobody precincts. Nobody has to look. We all know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, right now, the one that uh, seems to be having the most uh, burglaries and all is Precinct 3. And. Uh, yeah, Precinct 3 had 15 burglaries last month. And, um, got a hot, yeah, there's a, got there's a hot spot up there in Rolling Oaks. Yeah, there's a couple of areas where they've had uh, a lot of problems. Um, yeah, it seems like a lot of the crime has been along some of the major highways on 64 and um, Was all shared at the last meeting that I missed. There was a just just something that they did bring out. The, the sheriff did bring, sheriff's investigator did bring out in the in the last meeting uh, was that uh, they they solved they solved the burglary ring crime uh, just uh, uh, on 64 just south, just south of Wills Point. Mm -hmm. There had been there had been seven burglaries. One home had been burglarized twice. One one of one of the burglars lived with his parents uh, in in that area right in, that community, in the yeah. in the oh, home that, that was burglarized it. twice. So when he saw him leave, he would he would he would call he would call his buddies. Uh, he'd go over there and set the stuff out. His buddies would come <laughs> over there in the pickup and and haul it and haul it off before anybody before anybody got back home. Yeah, but he well, lived across the street somewhere. Well, he could keep an eye on the. Well, one of the one of the deputies investigated that real good, and they and they and they caught all five burglary uh, burglars, yeah. and uh, and solved all seven of those burglaries. Wow, yeah. well, that's so, great. And yeah. that's happened. And that's happened just recently. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's some of the stuff that's really interesting to hear from the sheriff yeah. and the crime investigators. Yeah, exactly. You mentioned precinct one and two have meetings. You did not mention precinct three. Precinct three is on. Um, yeah, Precinct 3, I'm, I'm just involved with Precinct 1, I'm the chairman, but I would, as I said just a few minutes ago, Precinct 3 had the most burglaries. They had like 15 last month, so yeah. Precinct 3, yeah, they, they tend to statistically have the most burglaries. Um, yeah, so you look at this chart, Precinct 3 is the red one, and you can see how high that red line is compared to the other precincts. Uh, one thing the sheriff did cite is since we have got those big old signs, they're a good deterrent. Oh, yeah. yeah. If, if I'm going to steal a lawnmower and there was a crime watch car went by, well, I just go by too. I didn't take a chance. I need to see my yeah. so are you Are you a member of uh, PWP? So, Doug, anything uh, you, you might want to share? <laughs> Doug's been involved with it a lot longer than I have, and he's 
he's the he's the uh, patrol coordinator for Precinct One. Can you tell us about the? I think I got a few works. stories. Uh, <clears throat> I can tell you. I can tell you about the way the patrols work. If you, which you, if you want to patrol, fill out a form. Sheriff uh, does a minor background check on it, and you're authorized to patrol. You still have to go through about an hour and a half class. Uh, has to be notarized. Make it, it's all official for legal reasons, and then uh, you patrol in your sectors in your precinct, and then based upon the data the sheriff gives once a month, and we assign you to a, a certain sector. If you live in sector 21, and the idea is that you know it better than anybody does, so you patrol that sector part of the time, and then you go to the next ones around, you know, where the highest crime is. And essentially, you patrol any if you want to, but Obviously, you, uh, as a patrol person, you want to get something out of it. I, I know I do, so I patrol where I live. And then once I patrol that area, then I go to the next one's around or one that's something to me. Really simple to do. It's a pain sometimes, you know. Uh, but what, what else can you do in the heat? <laughs> you know, <laughs> in your air conditioning uh, truck? <laughs> there's, there's been no backlash yet, and uh, the sheriff says it's working. They say the signs work, uh, and that, you know, the calls that we call into the sheriff, you know, reporting lots of numbers, so on and so forth, they keep those. And if there is a, a burglary or something, then they got at least a license number to go start checking in, in that area. We need more people, we need more people patrolling. The, if the signs are deterrent, and that's why they are, then we need those cars out here all the time, you know, patrolling. So if you have a couple hours a month, every other month or whatever, I, I encourage you to do it. Uh, the sheriff says that they're hauling stuff out of here just haul trucks from this county and he he will tell you right up front he said there's nothing I can do about it I got two deputies so I'm responsible for my stuff as far as son is as you are so if you want your stuff protected I'd, I'd encourage you to join the program and uh, sign up for the patrol that's that's yeah one thing too um, we do have smaller individual property signs that uh, like if you're out in a rural area, you can put it on your gate or on your fence or something like that to say that uh, you know you are this property is you know patrolled by PWP. So those things are available too for members. Are they permanent kind of signs? Or yeah, they're metal signs. Oh, okay. that, yeah, you would mount right on a you know on the fence or a gate or something like that. It's kind of like these security signs you see. Like the farm they have a couple of different sizes, smaller ones and bigger ones. Okay, yes, sir. Just because you're not a member of PWP, y'all do PWP work. By that, I mean, when you're up and down these roads like I am, you know, by dog and all, I'm always kind of looking at, I've written down, I don't know how many black play numbers, a lot of these stories, but pay attention. Yeah, well that that's great. But if you're you know you've got those eyes, that's what they're looking for. You might want to get involved with PWP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> again, it's a volunteer thing, you know. Maybe once a month or so you could go out with a partner and cruise around a little bit. I know Doug and I have had some fun doing that. A cup of coffee and yes, sir. So I'm sorry if I'm repeating some of this, but how many members do you have? Uh in precinct one, we have I think about thirty-five. Yeah, and countywide is uh, one hundred and twenty. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And did the sheriff have anything to do with starting it? Well, it was the sheriff's idea. It was his idea. Yeah. Okay. The sheriff was the one. Yeah, the sheriff. Right now, I heard heard that uh, Larry Smith in Smith County was in a discussion, and he mentioned to somebody that he's willing to have deputies sounds like you know with sidearms so or is any of that training or anything involved with what y'all are doing or y'all no. CHL no, we're, not, we're not law enforcement that's, yeah. that's the problem in, in Van Zandt County is they just don't have the funds to hire more deputies and stuff I mean if they had you know like a dozen deputies out there you know and half of them you know and six deputies patrolling all the time they probably wouldn't need PWP yeah. But uh, that's the reason he why he just said we, have, you know, we, we have limited funding, and so you know we only have so many deputies, and and they're basically doing crime response. They're not they're not out there trying to do prevention. 
and just too busy, you know, responding to all the different things going on. Yeah, there's so. a there's a book called Constitutional Homeland Security by Edwin Vieira, and he goes back to our founding. He's got like four PhDs from Harvard, mm -hmm. plus being a chemist earlier, and he goes back to our founding, and and what they were doing, you know, back in the 1700s. And it's his contention that we need to get back to that. Yeah, this year. And this seems like. Sort of. It uh, seems yeah, like a, a, a crack in that door to yeah. have a relation with the sheriff, who's the key guy in the county. Yeah. So if there is any, like, other than burglary, tyranny. Yeah. Or, well, you know, martial law, then at least you're on the law side of the martial law. Sure. Thing. Well, that, that's the idea. It's so that the sheriff knows who you know if he's got these volunteers he knows who he's working with and he's already done the background checks on you and stuff so that he can call you up you know if there is something big going on where he needs some help and uh, I've been doing a study of Texas history and about the Texas Rangers and they were just you know ranchers and stuff to start with right and they would get called out you know and they need them to go you know chase Indians or something like that you know and there'd be some of them volunteer <laughs> they're all good shots they make got a name for themselves, you know, over the years. Uh, but, um, yeah, it is sad that, uh, you know, the way this country's going, that and there's a lot of negative um, media out there about police officers and stuff. It's really sad. You know, they're out We're there getting brainwashed. To, yeah, but a lot of the you know, media is really negative, you know. They think that, anyway. Want well, to, the media. I don't, I don't want to try to get political here. <laughs> the media really hit Lindsey when he made that comment about, you know, we don't have enough sheriffs and, the, you know, you should have a gun handy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But then the liberals are upset. You know, they want to oh, yeah. take away our guns. You know. So only the bad guys will have guns. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any, any more questions? Uh, if you want to look at our precinct map, show you what the different sectors are, and I, I've got these graphs you can take a look at later after the meeting. But have you got a contact got. person for each precinct in that list over there or anything like that? What? Like if we want to contact uh, in our precinct to join, is, oh. that, is that available?